Spiti Valley in Himachal Pradesh, India is 3,800 meters above sea level and only accessible a few months out of the year due to the long, harsh winters. In 2007, I taught English and math to Tibetan Buddhist nuns there. To get to Yanchen Choling Nunnery, I took a three-hour ride to the airport, two flights over 24 hours to Delhi, India, a 14-hour jeep ride to Manali, a town just below the tree line, two days rest to acclimate to the altitude, and a nine-hour jeep ride teetering on deathly high cliffs. Tibetan Buddhist nuns wear deep red wrapped skirts made from one piece of cloth and shave their heads, symbolizing a rejection of materialism. I asked Dolma, a brilliant 15-year-old, nearly fluent English, why, and she said, because we are nuns. All summer, five-year-old Nedin, who was seven years short of taking the oath to be a nun, was often in the kitchen with children from village Pangmo. Village Pangmo was just across the field. It had a few homes and a small store. In the kitchen, I always had my own cup of fresh tea. My own cup. My cup. It wasn't mine, but even in this Himalayan kitchen, I needed to own things. I understood myself in relation to what was mine. Once, at the village store, Dolma bought a package of biscuits and hid it in the fold of her robe. She asked us not to tell the other girls. Dolma smiled and said, do you think because we are nuns, we do not want our own biscuits? The last day of class, we gave some of the photos we had to the girls, and there weren't enough to go around. One of the younger girls, Sonam, got angry and lied and hid some photos. Before I could get involved, they silently started to share the rest of the photos. No one looked upset or complained. They gave her the pictures because she cared the most, and next time it would be someone else's turn. The symbolism in their daily lives may be religiously profound, but it was also the complicated reality of girls learning to grow up. The morning I was to start the journey home, I stood on the hill above the nunnery at the door of the small hut built into a cliff that the nuns dubbed the cave. I saw deep red robes in the yard. They emitted prayers that urged the sun to rise. The view had always seemed strange and foreign. I kicked a rock off the cliff and watched it tumble down. And I finally let myself experience it as familiar.